Hello everyone and welcome to this unit on sequences. Mm -hmm. This is part of the sixth unit in algebra. For this unit you should already know what the term to term rule for a sequence of numbers is. You should also already know how to find terms in a linear number sequence. The key words you should already know are term to term rule, linear sequence and geometric sequence. Now you should have been introduced to these terms earlier on and I will be adding more lessons uh, in case you need to cover the basics. So let's get started with the first lesson on linear sequences. Learning objectives for this lesson. So at the end of this lesson you should be able to find the nth term of a linear sequence. You should know also how to test whether a number is a term of a given linear sequence or not. Let's start with an example. Here is a sequence of patterns made with matchsticks. The term number is shown at the top here. So this is the first term, this is the second term, and this is the third term. How many matchsticks are there in each term? How many matchsticks will there be in the fourth and fifth terms? And how many matchsticks will there be in the fiftieth term? So have a go at answering these questions, and I'll let you pause the video before I show answers. Okay, so let's have a look. There are five matchsticks in the first term, nine matchsticks in the second term, and 13 matchsticks in the third term. As you can see, we're just adding four each time. So in the fourth and fifth terms, we're going to have 17 and 21 matchsticks respectively. Plus four for this sequence is called the term to term rule. It's also known as the common difference for the sequence. We can use this to find the number of matchsticks in the 50th term. Now, to get to the second term, we're adding 4 once. To get to the third term, we're adding 4 twice. To get to the fourth term, we're, we would have to add 4 three times, and so on. So how many times do you think we would have to add 4 to get to the 50th term? Well, it follows that we would have to add 4 49 times. We can write this as a calculation to find the 50th term. We take 5, which is the first term, and we add 4 49 times to get 201. A few more keywords. When the term-to-term -term rule involves addition or subtraction of a constant number, the sequence is called a linear sequence. It's also known as an arithmetic sequence. Of course, you could have another type of sequence where you're multiplying each, each time to get to the next term. I'm going to introduce some notation now. I'm going to call the position of each term n. So when n equals 1, I'm talking about the first term. When n equals 2, I'm talking about the second term. When n equals 3, I'm talking about the third term. So n is just the position of a given term. I'm going to call the actual terms in the sequence. I'm going to denote them um, using this notation. So I've got u and I've got subscript here, 1. This subscript, this small small number, in the bottom on the bottom bottom corner is actually n so when n is 1 we're talking about the first term in the first position which is 5 u2 is the term in the second position which is 9 u3 u3 is the term in the third position which is 13 so u subscript n is the term in the nth position now we can start looking at the nth term rule of the sequence so what is the nth term rule the nth term rule of a sequence is just a formula which we can use to find any term in that sequence. So earlier on we found the 50th term. The nth term rule will allow us to find any term, the 100th term, the millionth term, any term you want in that sequence. Let's have a look at an example. This is the nth term rule of a sequence. Can you find the first five terms of this sequence? Well find the first five terms of this sequence, all we need to do is substitute our values of n into this formula. So for n equals 1, 
we would have u subscript 1, which is the first term in the sequence, which would be 2 times 1 minus 1, and that would give us 1. So the first term in the sequence is 1. Can you work out the other five, four terms? I'll give you a chance to pause, and then I'll carry on showing you the answers. Okay, so let's have a look. U2 is going to give me 3. U3 is going to give me 5, 7, and then the fifth term is going to be 9. This is just the sequence of odd numbers. Let's go back to our matchstick example. Let's see if we can find the nth term of this sequence. Here is the sequence in red. I've also put n on top. I want to find the nth term. So I want to find, I want to be able to find how many matchsticks there are in the nth position, in any general position. We're going to use the term to term difference, or the term to term rule, which is add 4. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the term to term rule, the, the common difference, and multiply it by n. Now you might be thinking, how did I know? that this is what I should try. At this point, we're just experimenting. We're trying things out. So let, let's see what happens when we work out 4n. For the first term, I'm going to get 4. The second term, I'm going to get 8. And for the third term, I'm going to get 12. The 50th term, I'm going to get 200. Now at this point, you should notice something. If you compare 4n to our sequence, it's not far off. In fact, it's only off by 1. If we were to add 1 each time, we would get our sequence. So, we can straight away work out 4n plus 1, which gives us our sequence, the one we want, which tells us that this is the nth term rule. This is the formula which will allow us to work out any term in that sequence. So the nth term rule, written this way, of this sequence is 4n plus 1. Here are some exercises. Can you find the nth term rule for the following sequences? I'll give you a chance to pause the video and try those exercises before I show you answers. Okay, let's have a look. So, I'm going to put my n values of n on top so that we can see. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to work out the term to term difference. For the first sequence, this is plus 3. Now that should tell me that I need to try and work out 3n for each term. 3n would just simply give me the multiples of 3, and comparing to my sequence, I know that I just need to add 2. To get, to get my sequence. So the nth term is 3n plus 2 for that sequence. For the second sequence, my term to term rule is plus 4. And my nth term rule is 4n minus 1. For the third sequence, it's plus 5. And my nth term rule is 5n plus 3. For the fourth, sequ for the fourth sequence, even though I'm starting here with a negative number, I'm using the same principle. I'm working out the term-to-term -term difference. I compare 2n to my original sequence, and I should notice that all I need to do is subtract 3 to get my, to get my sequence. It's best here to look at just one of these terms. So after I've worked out 2n, I can compare it to minus 1. When n is 1, 2n is 2, so I need to subtract 3 to get minus 1, which is the first term. Okay, so moving on now to another example. We are now going to learn how to test whether a number is in a term or not. So in this example, we're trying to find out whether the number 69 belongs in the below sequence or not. I'm going to let you pause the video and experiment and try some things out and try and work this out.
what you're trying to find out is whether 69 belongs in this sequence or not. Okay, let's have a look at the solution. The way to go about this is, first of all, to find the nth term rule of this sequence. The nth term rule of this sequence is 5n minus 3. We should be getting quite good at finding the nth term rule of linear sequences by now. Now, un, remember, is a term in the nth position. It's, it's a number. So it's the number 2 when n is 1. It's the number 7 when n equals 2. And it's the number 12 when n equals 3 and so on. So if we look at 69, 69 is also a term in this sequence. So we can write un equals 69 for some n. We just don't know what that n is and whether it even exists. It may not exist if 69 is not in this sequence. What we can do now, though, is try and find out what this n is. So if we substitute 69 into the nth term formula, we get 69 equals 5n minus 3. If we can try and find out whether what this n is, we can find the position of 69 in this sequence. That is, if 69 is actually in that sequence. And we'll find out whether it is or not in a, uh, in a second. If we rearrange this equation, we find that n is actually 72 over 5. I've, all I've done is rearrange this equation to find n. Now, 72 over 5 is actually a decimal number, or it's a fraction which cannot be simplified to a whole number. So n is not an integer for 69. What this tells us is that 69 cannot be in this sequence because all terms in this sequence have a whole number for n or have a an integer to, di to indicate their position. So the number 2, n equals 1. Uh, for 7, n equals 2. We cannot have n equals 0 0.5, for example. That would not be referring to a term in that sequence. This tells us that 69 is not a term in this sequence, because if it was, we would find a whole number for n, which would tell us its position. I'm just going to summarize now the lesson outcomes, what we should have achieved for this lesson. We should now be able to use the term-to-term -term rule of a sequence to find terms, which is what we looked at in the first example. We should also be able to work out terms given the nth term rule of a sequence. We then looked at how to find the nth term rule of a linear sequence using the term-to-term -term difference. We then had a go at testing whether a number is in a term, uh, a given term in a sequence or not. Now I will be uploading exercises to help you practice what you've learned in this lesson shortly, so look out for that link.